Hi guys! Marika here with another coloring and card tutorial and today I'm going to color a woodpecker! So my father loves birds and this is actually his birthday card and uh, his birthday is tomorrow and he won't get the card until later this week but I don't care, I wanted to post this video now because I really liked how it turned out. So for the bird I'm coloring it with Copics as usual so it's printed on Make It uh, color blending paper, blending cardstock, uh, and it is a Make It Crafty image. Make It Crafty has a whole bunch of these very adorable birds. I chose the woodpecker because the woodpecker is um, native to Sweden. It's probably native to a lot of countries, but um, it is native to Sweden. And my father's favorite birds are the ones that he can see from his window, and woodpeckers are are actually one of those. So I decided to color him up. I did go out on Google and looked at a whole bunch of different reference images to figure out what kind of color scheme that a woodpecker would have. And what one of the things that I really saw in these images was that the black that they have isn't really black. It's more towards a purplish, blue purplish tone. So, and also their beak is also kind of a grayish, bluish, purple kind of tone. So I decided to use the B60s for his beak, but also for the highlights uh, on the bird, the highlights on the top of his head and a little bit on the feathers. I really, I have this, uh, one of the reference images just beside me. You can actually see my mobile phone in the <laughs> lower left corner. And that's um, kind of so I knew how to do the coloring. And every time you see, I have a little waiting a little bit uh, before going in with a, with a marker. That is because I'm kind of looking at the image. Uh, am I on the right track? How I'm going to do this. Um, one of the things when you do birds is that you want to get the kind of feathery texture into your bird. And I do that with teeny tiny flakes. Now, to make teeny tiny flakes, one of the things is you have to practice a lot. Um, I always done flicking when I'm blending, but then you do flicking that is a little bit heavy handed. This is flicking that is very, very light handed. And also, I have noticed that if you take your marker and you kind of put it vertically, that's the word, yes, right up, so you have it kind of straight towards the ceiling, then you can get even thinner lines. But what you do is you carefully put your marker down into the paper and then you just flick from, preferably from like a line or towards what where you want it to be thinnest. Then you do small, small, small flicks. In this case, as I knew that I was going over a whole bunch of colors doing this, I didn't try to make it more solid. I thought it was totally okay just working with the flicking technique. And as you see, I'm going in with the different blues, adding more and more blue here and there because I'm realizing that it's not enough coverage on, my, on, on the blues to make it look like it's a highlight. I don't want it to be white. I want it to have just the blue as the highlight. And for the blacks, because I do want it to look a little bit dimensional, I do want it to have um, motion and everything in the blacks. I'm using the cold grays because they work very, very good with blue tones. And I also use them from C6 and upwards. C6 is actually not seen that much, but it does help with filling in some of the areas where I'm doing the flakes to make it look a little bit more like its feathers. And then I'm going over with the C8 and the C10. When I came to the C10, I didn't feel that it has had enough of that black feeling, the, the pitch black that I was going for. Um, the woodpecker has very pitch black feathers. So I instead I went in on top of that with the 110. And why I took the 110 instead of the 100 
well, that was the one that was highest in the pile of markers where my blacks are. I have my blacks in the same a little hole where I have my colorless markers but also where I have my fluorescence and the 100 was a little bit deeper in that pile than the 110 so that's why I basically just use the 110 no particular reason uh, those are actually two of the markers I don't have swatched so I don't really see the difference I need to swatch them up and have them somewhere so that I can see that but yeah so that is is the kind of black part um, the woodpecker also have a very slight little um, red spots and it has a red spot on the neck however the white spot that I have there isn't yeah I kind of improvised a little bit um, hoping that some red woodpeckers would have a different coloring than others or something but I did went in and did the red parts um, again uh, the colors I'm using are kind of uh, towards a little bit of a peachy red because that is the red that was in the reference photo also the whites have a little bit of yellow in them just so they can get a little bit more a little bit more, more more realistic but yeah then I'm cutting this little birdie out with my cutter B scissors um, I'm going to make a background so it looks like it's on a tree um, this specific stamp actually have a tree trunk also I think that you can use but um, I didn't choose to use the tree trunk I wanted to kind of make a um, make the tree be very much in the background so that the bird would pop on the card so that's the idea behind it um, cutting out some watercolor cardstock this is the Monteval cardstock I'm cutting it down to five and a quarter by four because I want to have a card base that have a little bit of a border around um, it's the Canson Montwall 300 GSM cardstock so it's pretty thick and therefore it can it, it takes water a lot can take a lot of water which means I can layer a lot of colors so I'm starting off with some shabby shutters and some distressed uh, antique linen however my antique linen I think it is running out of ink I do have a reinker for it the only reinker I have uh, so I need to do that so I didn't get that much color out of it I got much more of the shabby shutters and every time that I dip this I heat set it with a heat gun it takes quite some time to do that I'm trying to cut off some of it when I'm done with those colors I just dry off the sheet and go in with a little bit of frayed burlap and then this um, let's see I have the colors just in front of me I'm just gonna remember which the one I had mm, yeah peeled paint the green was is the peel paint <laughs> um, and then I'm just dipping it in uh, when I feel I'm done with the color I reapply with a new one this is the frayed burlap again because I wanted to add some more to the trunk side of this paper I wanted to add more colors you can actually use when you have one of these heating tools you can actually push the ink with the air a little bit to finish it off I'm going to do some splatters I'm doing again using the peel paint I'm going to do a little bit of splatter on the green side I don't want the green side to have too much splatter too much craziness because the green sides is going to be the background so instead I'm adding some espresso uh, onto the trunk side um, ground espresso on the trunk side and then I'm going in with some crushed crushed olive to add a little bit more texture and now you see it is like an abstract feeling that you have a, tr um, a little tree trunk there even though you didn't color a tree trunk for finishing touches I'm gonna do a very small happy birthday flag in one of the corner so I'm picking these two from the Simon's stamp stamps um, to write out happy birthday and I'm gonna use both sides on my little um, block there because um, 
they are not exactly the same height. Different stamp sets might not be the same height. So I'm stamping them one after each other. So I thought I just put them on one on each side. Then I'm cutting it down to be a good width. And then I'm just gonna use my scissors to cut it off and finish it off with a little bit of a flag end. So it's just a teeny tiny sentiment. I wanted it to I wanted to have a sentiment, but I didn't want the sentiment to be the big thing. So this is how it's gonna end up. And first I'm gonna use some foam tape. This is the 3M foam tape and I'm using a whole bunch of it because the watercolor cardstock warps a little bit and for it to be straight on my card base I'm just adding a whole bunch uh, on the back side. If you have those uh, foam sheets you can use that instead and just other tapes but this is the adhesive I have I don't have any foam so and now I'm using a little foam tape piece underneath the happy birthday and also underneath the bird I put a whole bunch of different foams uh, to add it onto the card and like the tree trunk is where I'm, I'm trying to figure out where it would look like it's actually sitting on a tree trunk if I place it and then I just push it down when I'm happy where it is. Um, this foam tape is good if you kind of just push a little bit extra on it to make it uh, fasten better. But yeah, that was the card for today. I hope you liked it. If you do, please thumbs it up. It means a lot to me. If you have any questions, just comment down below. Down below you find all the details and materials used in today's card. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye!